welcome to the channel. Today we have another episode of Ask the Audience where I've received a question on how to do something and I've decided to go ahead and record a video on that subject. So today we're going to talk about dynamically changing custom connector URLs using a feature inside of the custom connector wizard called policy templates. Let's go. All right, let's talk a little bit about why this episode is important. So sometimes when we have a custom connector, we need to be able to override the design time behaviors or configurations of our custom connector. One of these uh, such configurations would be the host URL. So when you go ahead and create a new custom connector, the, one of the first questions you're asked is what is the host URL of the service you're trying to connect to? But what if we want to go ahead and be able to override that value? Or what if we want to go and override other characteristics of a custom connector, including headers or query parameters? And the answer really lies within this policy template feature. Now, this may help you manage a custom connector code base across multiple environments. So for example, let's say you have a custom connector, you expect it to behave the same way across all environments, this could be an approach that you can use in order to set up the variables inside of a flow that would allow you to populate these dynamic values. And so you would control it from that level as opposed to having to maintain multiple levels or multiple versions of your, say, Swagger definitions because naturally you can go ahead and tweak that there as well. Uh, you might also have some scenarios where you do have a logically related group of operations, but they may talk to different systems. And that is where you get stuck using the default experience. But if you can dynamically change that URL at runtime, then that gives you more flexibility. Now, I will call out a caution here that when you use OAuth authentication, there are going to be some bits that might be specific to a specific environment. For example, you might have a specific application ID inside of Azure AD for each of your various applications that you'd be connecting to to authenticate. So I would call that out. Do uh, demonstrate some caution here. I think this approach that I'm going to show you works really well with API keys as authentication or obviously no authentication as well. But I would be cautious about trying to use this approach with OAuth. Before we dive deeper into the content, I wanted to let you know about an emerging community found at serverlessnotes.com. This is a community resource that covers best practices, tips, and latest announcements built on contributions by technology enthusiasts from around the globe. On serverlessnotes.com, you'll find content related to Power Automate, Azure Logic Apps, Azure Service Bus, Azure Functions, and much, much more. Serverlessnotes.com is brought to you by Serverless 360, a portal that is focused on operations and support for Microsoft Azure serverless resources. Now this is a complementary tool to the Azure portal and it helps organizations in supporting Azure serverless applications. You can find out more about Serverless 360 at serverless360.com. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about these policy templates. And here's a link to the Microsoft documentation. I'll include it in the description if you want to dig deeper. But essentially what it does provide you is ability to extend or customize the behavior of a custom connector, no pun intended. And so this is essentially the extensibility mechanism that we do have access to us. Now Microsoft has provided a set of templates out of the box for us to use. The one that we're going to focus on today is set host URL. But there are some other very useful ones, including setting a query string parameter um, or setting an HTTP header as well. And whenever you select those, you do have some uh, choices to make in terms of like what you do if there is already a value present. So you might want to overwrite it. Uh, you might want to leave it. And you have that control itself. So these are the different templates that are made available to us. And this is all available inside of the custom connector wizard. I will show you that in more detail in the demo itself. Now, how do we use these things? Okay, so what I've gone ahead and done is I've said, I want to go ahead and use the set host URL template. Now, when I go ahead and do that, I need to provide this URL template itself, meaning where will I get this value from that I can inject in runtime 
that will override the host URL. And so here we can see there is a little syntax language here and we can provide at query parameters. And then here, this is a value that I've defined called new underscore URL. And what I've done is I've included uh, the basically a screenshot of the expressions and some examples here that you can find inside of Microsoft's documentation. And as you can see, we can pull from a variety of different locations. It could be from a header, it could be from a query parameter, or it could even be from a connection parameter itself. And essentially we can use these expressions inside the URL template text box here in order to drive the behavior of what we want to inject into the runtime itself. So with that said, let's go ahead and let's take a look at a demo. All right, so I'm in the Power Automate Maker Portal and I'm in the Custom Connector section and I'm in the Edit Experience for an existing Custom Connector. So this is just a very simple Custom Connector that allows us to go ahead and retrieve updated weather from weatherstack.com. So you can see here that we've got the host URL and we've got a base URL just as a forward slash itself. From a security perspective here, we're using API keys. And then from a definition perspective, we have a single action called get weather. And as part of that action, we have a couple query parameters. And so this one's pretty important, right? So query, that is a parameter that the connector, it's that the service itself is expecting, the weather service. And basically that's the name of the city that we want to get the weather for. This, this new URL is something that I had created, right? And I had added, and you can do so from, you know, importing from a sample. And so this is where I've defined new underscore URL. And this is where the value that we will leverage in our policy template uh, to basically do that swap. And when we create, in this case, a query parameter, it could be a header as well. What will happen is on our action inside of Power Automate, we will now have a placeholder for new URL, which we will go ahead and populate. So that's how we go ahead and we just construct our action, you know, as we normally would. Uh, so nothing's really changed there. Where things get new is when you go down to, you scroll down and you find policies. What I've done is I've created a policy called assign new URL. I can go ahead and click on it. And this is essentially the screen that I showed in the slides where there was a screenshot. And I've got my set host URL is the type of template that I want to go ahead and execute on. I can choose the operations. In this case, I have a single operation. So I'm going to go ahead and select get weather. And then here I'm going to go ahead and use the URL template, which is query parameters and then single quotes. Make sure they're like the regular ones, not the curly ones. And then basically provide your query parameter name. And here we can see is what's going to happen at runtime. We're going to have HTTP colon forward slash forward slash, then essentially our web address. And then we're going to add a backslash as well. And so that's going to get substituted at runtime. And that's essentially it from a policy template perspective. You can go ahead, and update this connector, and then it becomes available inside of Power Automate. So here I've got a flow. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this fail first, just so you can see that this is actually working, like how this actually works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say get weather and I'm going to just say bing.com. And I'm going to look for the weather for a city in Canada called Edmonton. So let's go ahead, let's hit save. I will now go ahead and run this and I fully expect this to fail. But what it's demonstrating is that it is going to take bing.com and inject it into my custom connector call. Now, naturally, Bing doesn't have that API available. And so as a result, I'm going to get a failure, which is to be expected. So let's go ahead. Let's now edit this and let's put in a proper value. And here we can go ahead and save this and then go ahead and hit test. So if you were dealing with a custom connector where you've got multiple environments and say the the server or the endpoint is different in each environment, this is where you could go ahead and define a variable up front. And you could basically just populate that right there. Other approaches could be maybe you store all of this information in a database and you can go ahead and query based upon the environment and then pull the data from it dynamically and then naturally populate it using dynamic content. But in this case, we're going to provide api.weatherstack.com, the proper URL. And when we go ahead and test this, 
uh, we should expect to see the weather for Edmonton. And here we go. The weather in Edmonton is a balmy 17 degrees Celsius. So not a lot of fun in Edmonton right now. But anyways, hopefully that describes how you can go ahead and use these policy templates. When I was digging into this, investigating, I found that there wasn't a lot of content out there that explains this feature in a whole lot of detail. And so that was part of the reason why I wanted to share this with you folks as well. So that concludes another episode and another edition of Ask the Audience. If you have any questions that you would like me to go ahead and try and solve, go ahead and put them in the comment section and I will do my best to address those questions itself. Uh, if you're not following me on Twitter, I'd encourage you to go ahead and do so. You can find me at Wearzy. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, would really appreciate a subscribe. And if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give it a like. So that's it for this episode. We'll catch you soon on the channel. Thanks again for watching.